welcome to the very first episode of uh, War on Television, a brand new little thing I've got going. Every two weeks I'm going to try and get together what I've been doing over those past two weeks. But, um, you know, I'll be doing performances, just whatever the hell I think of. And um, I'm sure I'll keep us entertained if you give me the chance and you can chart up my, uh, my path to world domination. Maybe, we'll see, or to uh, living in the gutter. Either way, it'll be interesting to see how I get there, won't it? All right, um, so anyway, we got uh, things like an interview I did with Anna Livia Radio in Dublin, including um, a cover version of one of my father, David Virgin's songs, and a couple of other funny, interesting little things. I'll uh, talk to you again in a minute after you watch the show. Hope you enjoy it, and uh, keep in touch, keep... Keep entertained. I'll talk to you soon. If I wrote Ulysses, it'd have been so boring. The complexities of my mind should carry a warning. With so much of myself in the streets of Dublin, so much of me from the walks in the morning. With my time extraction now found in my shoes I've done so much walking With so much left to do If all the world's a stage And life is but a play Why am I the lead character Of this a romantic tragedy? I wonder what it turned out like, they haven't told me yet. Uh, if anyone lost. <laughs> Sorry, if anyone's just tuned in, uh, Rowan is live with me in studio. Um, we're talking about your brand new album, this is your fourth studio album as well. My fourth solo studio album, that's right. Um, I, I mean, I started recording when I was probably about 16 in Lismore, Australia. As you can probably tell from the accent, you know, but um, this is my, my fourth solo album and the third solo album that I've recorded uh, in, in Dublin. I've started over the last couple of years putting together a little home hard drive studio, piece by piece, and um, and this is the the, the 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 result of you know a couple of years hard work trying to get my head around the studio, and it's you know it's the best sounding one so far. In my, I think we've really we're kind of hitting the peak of what we can what we can get out of this studio, so it's it's good. It's a good testament to to what you can do yourself, the independent artist, you know. Record wise. Are your tracks just yourself and an acoustic guitar or is it like the, the full band? No, no, in fact, um, in fact, what I just played there isn't all that representative of the album. Um, I do I do the odd solo uh, kind of acoustic project as well, but mm. the, the, the albums are drums, bass, piano, guitars, everything. Oh, that, yeah. yeah, and I, you know, I do it all myself because um, I don't want to pay anyone. No, <laughs> <laughs> no really, no. I like the autonomy of it, and you know, it, it forces me to learn instruments, which is is always a good thing. I can fill in on drums or bass whenever I have to, which is you know, it's always handy. Mm -hmm. And I, I only have to deal with one crazy musician instead of four or five. You know. <laughs> hey, you mentioned at the start that uh, your deal is that you're doing all your albums for free. People yeah. can download them free. What, why is that? Well, you know, I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> um, basically, there's a a. Uh, an em economical reason for it, and there's a philosophical reason. The economical reason being, it's the cheapest and easiest way to get my music to as many people as possible. Um, you know, I'm not backed by Sony BMG at the moment. Um, and really, you know, when, when I go to a band's page and I want to hear their music, I don't, this is just me personally, but I don't want to hear a 30 second clip Mm -hmm. of a low bit rate kind of muffled thing, you know, and then the next thing that pops up is give us your credit card details, you know. <laughs> it's just not all that inviting, and especially in this day and age when you've got these file share kind of programs where if anyone can be bothered, really, they'll just go on and get it for free anyway. Yeah. You know, that's just the hard truth of it. I'm just making it easy. Um, then onto the philosophical or more romantic kind of um, perspective is um, you know, music for me is about communication and healing 
and um, enjoyment and, you know, as far as I'm concerned, music should be free anyway. And how are the downloads going? Obviously, you're on, you're on well. I, I don't like to uh, quote stats, <laughs> but if I must. Um, since, since I started last year, the last count I've had is something like 70,000 songs downloaded from my, from my website altogether. That's, that's probably a couple of months ago. That doesn't include since this album's released, and that's been going really well, so I'll have to, I'll have to update my stats for the next time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it really it powers along, you know, between free music and a bit of clever promotion and, you know, having what I think is a, a quality product. I mean, I wouldn't bother if I didn't think I had something that was worth you know, promoting. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, there, there's a formula there, and... Um, it's it's going well, that kind of thing. It's just got too much. You really got the kind of what MySpace is trying to do for every band. That's really happened for you. Was you've got the publicity out of that, and you've got the you've done your a lot of promotion through that. Yeah, it's. I mean, I think I think the thing a lot of people thought is when things like MySpace and and the internet in general came along, there seemed to be this kind of gold rush mentality, mm -hmm. get rich quick kind of thing. But it's it's not like that. You still need. You still need balls <laughs> and you still need a lot of hard work and you still need a, a product that you believe in you know and a few ideas mm. so yes it's a great marketing tool and yes it's a great way to create a fan base but it's it's by no means the uh, the the answer to all your questions you know you, you still need a lot of hard work um, yes I'm, I'm very happy with with how it's gone um, I mean, coming from Australia, and I have to emphasise that having a base in, in Europe, and especially in Dublin, is a great advantage, as well as the internet, you know. Living in Australia, it's great, you know, the sun and all that, but it's just so miles away from everywhere. Yeah. Your closest neighbour is New Zealand, and <laughs> yeah, it's, hard, it's hardly <laughs> Paris or, or Berlin. But um, between living in Dublin, using the internet for all it's worth, and um, and yeah, just just working hard. I think that's that's the key. That's the formula for anyone who mm -hmm. who wants to get something out of the music. Like I'm I'm happy with my level of success, no matter how I go. And that's I think part of my driving force is you know I'm just happy with whatever happens, and I'm also not happy with whatever happens. I want to always keep going, but uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I'm kind of just rambling, but. Um, I suppose it's, it is a good way to be though, is that we, you are content with the stuff that you're doing, but yet you feel like you can do more on It's exactly right. I mean, I'd, I'd be content to live and die with the albums I've made and the great feedback I've got and to live off my own wits for the rest of my life. And I'd also be content to get signed to a contract that I'm happy with, yeah. of course, you know, and that, that leaves me with my creative rights. And, and my my autonomy to an extent. So there's there's nothing wrong with money. There's nothing wrong with success or fame. People people mix up success and fame with um, with with being being a horrible person, and that's not true. We all know that there's been some great successful artists, and we all know that you can live off your wits and be a great artist and live in your own niche as well. Which th there's so many avenues with music at the moment, so you really can't lose as long as you're. You're true to yourself and true to your music. You really can't lose. Well, um, thanks for coming on. Um, you're gonna finish off with a song. I'm gonna right? finish off with a song here. Now this is a song. So this is a song. It's actually my father's song. We uh, made a little deal where I'd play one of his songs and then he'd play one of mine later on. Hopefully he'll actually do it, and he's not just getting me to promote him. <laughs> but um, no, it's a good song, and I've, I've always wanted to do something like this. So it's called um, One Nice Person. That's what it's called. David Virgin, my father David Virgin, and it's called One Nice Person. Enjoy. Okay. Oh baby, it's true, I have never loved you. I have never loved you the way that you wanted me to. Sad, but it's true. I have never loved you. No, I have never loved you the way that you wanted me to. And it only takes one nice person in your life. 
life It only takes one last person in your life But baby, it's not me Each episode, I'll be sitting in this lovely little chair and um, letting you know what the hell is on my mind over the last couple of weeks. This being the first episode of um, War on Television, I'm going to give you a little recap, or for those who are uninitiated, a uh, full-blown explanation of what I'm all about with my music and my life. Here goes. Basically for... Each CD I don't burn and send to an A&R man who's never actually going to listen to it anyway. I'm sending off a happy birthday message to someone somewhere in the world that includes a free download of my album. For each phone call I'm not making to a radio station that's never ever going to play my music, I'm emailing a cool little podcast that values good music and, you know, appreciates musicians and treats them with respect. For each amp I'm not carrying through the rain to get to a gig that I'm actually paying to play. I'm recording myself playing live on video or doing this. For every uh, five hours that I don't spend in a small smelly little van with four other people getting to a pub where people are eating their fish and chips while I'm playing and couldn't care less about what I'm actually doing. I'm contacting people on the internet who once again value the musician and I'm organizing cool little gigs. And finally for uh, each silly little press kit that I'm not sending to the likes of Sony, BMG and other huge monolithic um, record labels, I'm sending thanks gratitude and more free music to the fans that truly appreciate what I'm about and who truly enjoy my music. This is the age of fans. People for decades have been making money from uh, providing the services of the middleman. The guy that, okay, you, you're the musician, then there's the middleman, then there's the fans. I'm saying fuck the middleman. Who needs him? 
Fuck the middleman. Get your music straight to the fans. It's a win, 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 win situation. For so long, musicians have been exploited by these middleman type people, A&R men, uh, press kit sender offers. They say, you send us 5,000 CDs, we'll send them to every record company in the world. You know, I could go on and on and on, but basically, fuck them. Take back the power and um, let them have their, their Justin Timberlakes and their Britney Spears, you know. Let them have it. We'll do what we want. Thank you for listening to Rowan's Corner. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. When you walk through a storm, hold your hand. Liverpool versus Barcelona tonight. Who's gonna win? Ah, uh, Liverpool, of course. I mean, if they play play like they did last two weeks ago, I think they'll they'll win them for sure. They just got to win the midfield battle, and we got Steven Gerrard. Steven Gerrard. We got, we got Steven Gerrard, Momo Sissoko and Xabi Alonso in there. I think we got it. Peter Crouch. But this is Barcelona. They're one of the best teams in the world, let alone Europe. I know, but this is Liverpool. Everyone's always underestimating us. Peter Crouch. I mean, two years ago we won the cup. And, you know, no one believed in us. And look what we did. We're the kings of Europe, I mean, we've got Stevie Gerrard and Jamie Carragher. Steven Gerrard, Jamie Carragher. 3-0, 3, -nil. Three -nil we're going to win tonight. If we play like we did last week, last two weeks ago, I think we'd, we'd win 3-0. 3-0, 3-0. The hat-trick for Crouch. You, you know who Peter Crouch reminds me of? You know who he reminds me of? Thierry Henry. 3-0, <laughs> I think. The way he kicks that ball and the way he heads it down, did your fellow players, you know, like 3 0. You see, get the second ball every time, it's just. Ah, Liverpool are gonna win tonight. You know, like, you get that first ball and, and put it down to Kel, and then, like, Kel will scar, and that's just how it. Stop. I've got an Irish accent. So, your final predictions for tonight? 3 0 for sure. Steven Gerrard. I bet me life on it. Stevie Gerrard to hit one of his amazing kicks in, and maybe Peter Crouch. Maybe had to from Peter Crouch and like a kick from Risa. And I mean that's like 5-0 now, it would just be amazing, you're not gonna believe it. 3-0, 3-0. We're gonna win the cup again. We're gonna win the cup again this year, Liverpool! Two two on aggregate. Liverpool's advantage thanks to the added away goal they scored. Come on! Oh! That would have been the substitute. He's just got to get this on target. It's a goal. Great ball. It is the final. It is. It's all over. I told you I knew we'd win. We lost 1-0 on the day, but we still won the tie. We've knocked Barcelona out of the Champions League. I always knew it. I told you. I always knew it. Well, that was the show. Everything else you can find on the website, rowanforsale.com and my MySpace, myspace.com slash rowanforsale. Pop in, give me a comment, say hi, um, and that's it. So I, I'll see you in in part two of the uh, of, of of war on television. It'll be going for however long. I don't know yet, but just it'll just keep on going. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. <laughs>